Hello, grade three. All right, so we have talked about time over the past couple of days. Today we're switching and we're going to talk about 2D shapes. Tomorrow will be 3D shapes. I know that that seemed very short and very sudden. We will get back to our measurement unit later on. So time was part of our measurement unit. If you feel like you need more practice with it, just send me a message and I can send you some extra work that you can do, okay? Um, but we're going to be combining some things mainly because you were really picking up on that. You did some, some activities like that already in grade two, so you already kind of know that. So we're going to push forward, get through some more things. We have lots of work to do. Okay, so we're going to look at 2D shapes today. Um, you've talked about these in your other grades, so this will be brief as well, but let's take a look. So what is a 2D shape? We've talked about this for years now. 2D shape is something that can be laid flat on a piece of paper. So you can't feel all the sides. It's just flat, okay? So some of our 2D shapes are triangles, circles, squares, rectangles, things like that. However, now that we're in grade three, we're gonna talk about a special kind of 2D shape called a polygon. I should say that out loud, it's a funny word. Definitely interesting, polygons. So what are polygons? Polygons are flat figures, so they're 2D as well. But there's a special rule. They are any 2D shape that is made up of straight lines that are joined. So they join to make a corner or something that we will call a vertice. We'll talk about those words soon. So they join together. Um, so some words that might help you remember this are flat, something that's two dimensional, it's flat straight lines. In geometry, which is what 2D shapes are part of, we call those segments. So the straight lines are called segments. And joined means all the lines fit end to end and form a figure with no openings. So I might have a triangle and there isn't going to be an opening between these two lines. They meet, okay? I will link these videos underneath so you can watch if you think that you need them to help you understand a little bit better, but we will keep going. So here are some examples of polygons. So we've seen some of these shapes before, and we know that they each have a different number of sides or segments. <laughs> However, these ones are polygons because they are made up of straight lines, always straight lines all the way around, that meet to form these vertices, okay? So once again, um, this part would be called the face. These are called the vertices, or sorry, the segments. And the corners are called vertices, okay? So we know about triangles, they have three sides. Pentagons have five sides. Heptagons have seven sides. A quadrilateral has four sides. Quad means four. We like to call this a square, but now that we're in grade three, we're gonna start using bigger words like quadrilateral. Say that five times fast. A hexagon has six sides and an octagon has eight sides, okay? These are just some examples of some polygons. So when we take a look at them, we can see a pattern here. So for example, the triangle, an equilateral. The reason they say equilateral is they're saying that each of these sides are equal in length. They're the same, okay? But we'll just say triangle for now. So the triangle has three sides and three angles. So if you look inside here, so the outside, where this meets is called a corner or a vertice. If we look at that inside part, so here's my corner. This part inside here is called the angle, okay? So they have one angle, two angle, three angles. Another way to find out the number of angles is to look at each of the vertices. Three vertices, three angles, okay? Square has four and four, pentagon has five and five, Hexagon has six sides, one, two, three, four, five, six. It has six vertices or corners, and it has six angles on the inside. A heptagon has seven and seven, octagon, eight and eight, nonagon, nine and nine, and decagon, 10 and 10. Cool pattern. All right, one second, let's see here. So let's practice them, let's see if we can figure out how many sides each of these shapes has. So right here, that should be an easy guess. We've already learned about this shape a lot. How many sides does this have? This has three sides. It also has three vertices, one, two, three, and three angles on the inside. What about this one right next to it? How many sides does it have? So remember, 
we talked about the segments, the straight lines are the segments. So how many straight lines does it have? You can tell where a side or a segment ends by where it meets a corner. This is one, this is two, this is three. So we have three again, it's a triangle. This one right here, you should know how many sides this has. If you don't, I'm a little concerned. Four, what about this one right here? Still has four sides, one, two, three, four, but it's not a square because it's not equal sides, okay? What about this one right here? That's a five, that's a pentagon. This one also has one, two, three, four, five sides, just looks a little different. They're all straight lines, so it's still a shape and it's still a polygon. It just looks a little funny because they're different lengths. They're not equal lengths, those sides, okay? This one right here, has six. This one right here has one, two, three, four, five, six again. Are you noticing a pattern as we go through here? We have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, maybe not a pattern then, is it? Let's take a look. This one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I assumed that was an octagon. That's why it's really important to count the sides or you might make a mistake like that, a really easy mistake. So these two have seven. I don't know why I wrote seven up here. My goodness, Miss Julia, what are you doing today? This one had six as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Right here, this one is an octagon. We have starting here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? This one has, start on this one right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there is a pattern, but we still need to be careful about our counting, okay? I'm just, you know, it looks like I'm clicking in the middle of the air, but that's where my thing is that lets me type. This one right here, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What do you think this one's gonna have? We'll start with this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine again. And last but not least, we have our decagon that has 10 sides. We're gonna start right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, so it's really important that you're really careful when you're counting the number of sides, okay? So let's take a look at our next page. So now that we knew, know their names, how can we sort them? How can we make up a rule that tells us where they need to go? Let's start by counting the sides. So how many sides does this shape right here have? This is a square, we know this shape already. This shape has four sides. What about this one right here? Well, I'm gonna make a mark so I know which side I started on and I'm gonna count around. One, two, three, four, five, six. This has six sides. What about this one right here? One, two, three, four. What about this one right up here? I'm gonna start here. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I realize I'm my little camera is in the way there. Sorry, I'm gonna move myself over so that you can see a bit better. Let's see it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what do these shapes have in common? Well, I see two shapes that have four sides and two shapes that have six sides. Could that be my rule? Could I sort them by having shapes that have four sides on this side and shapes that have six sides on this side over here? I think that would work. Let's take a look. Perfect, there we go. Now we're going to write the rule. Just like when we were doing patterns, we looked for what was similar and we wrote a rule. So my rule, because I'm talking about polygons, is polygons with four sides and polygons with six sides. This side, the rule is that they have four sides. And over here, the rule is that they have six sides, okay? Any shapes that had six sides would go over here. What about these ones? Let's see if we can find the rule. So we have, how many sides? I'm gonna mark it again. One, two, three, four. Actually, I could mark all of them. One, two, three, 
four. I have four sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Eight sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So once again, I have eight sides and one, two, three, four, four sides. If you wanted to be a little extra, you could say shapes that have four angles and shapes that have eight angles. But we're going to talk about the sides still because that's the easiest way for us to sort them. So we would put the shapes that have four sides over on this side over here, and the shapes that have eight sides over here, okay? So just like this, there's no line down the middle, but we put both of the shapes that had eight sides over here, and we put both of the shapes that had four sides over here. So here's your job today. In your workbook, you're going to see pages that look like this. So it has our polygons, and your number one rule is that you're going to always start by counting how many sides it has. So I know sometimes when a shape has a lot of sides, we can get lost and not remember if we counted a side. So I really suggest doing what I just did, whereas where each time I counted a side, I put a little tick in it with my pencil. So I knew I already counted that one and that I wasn't gonna accidentally count it again. Because if I count it again, I'm saying there's too many sides. I'm writing down the wrong number, the wrong answer, okay? So I would go one, two, three, four, five, six. So that would have six sides. And I start counting a new side each time I hit a corner. That's how I know that I've started a new side, okay? So your job here is you're going to write the sorting rule. So up here, they wrote polygons with four sides and polygons with six sides. So they put all the polygons that had four sides over here and all the polygons that had six sides over here. When you write your rule, I don't want you to just write four and six. That doesn't show me grade three work. That's not... No, I want a sentence, just like they did this rule up here. So down here, let me get my typer. I would count the sides, one, two, three. So I think that the rule is I'm going to write these words, polygons with three sides, I saw in the triangle, and polygons with one, two, three, four sides. That's my rule, okay? You can write it a bit smaller than I did, so if it's on that line, that's up to you. You're gonna do the same thing here. For 1A on this side over here on page 95, you're gonna draw a polygon that fits in the set. So the only rule for this is that your sides have to be straight lines, and they have to meet, sort of like these ones do, okay? So this is a challenge, too. You have to really think about it. I want you to use a ruler or a straight edge so that you can make sure your sides are straight. I don't want you just drawing this freehand just willy-nilly with your pencil because then they won't be straight lines so they won't be proper segments, okay? They need to be straight lines so please, please, please use a ruler or a straight edge to help you with this, okay? Then you're going to write how you know your polygon belongs. Well, how could I figure out what my shape needs to look like? I mean, it could look a, a number of different ways, but each of these has something in common that we've been counting, so our shape will have to fit in that rule, okay? Now, Pooja sorted polygons into two sets by the number of sides. So for each one, for this question, you're going to draw two more polygons that would fit on each side. Then down here, you're going to sort them and you're going to come up with your rule. You can use the letters to help you sort. And when it says use the letters to help you sort, it means when you're making your chart like this, you don't have to redraw all those shapes. You can write your rule up at the top and on one side you can write just the letters of the ones that fit here and the letters of the ones that fit here. Then for your stretch your thinking, you're going to choose a sorting rule. So you're going to make up the rule first. Polygons with this many sides and polygons with this many sides. And then you're going to draw them. You're going to draw a table just like this with two shapes that fit under this rule and two shapes that fit under this rule, okay? So that's your job for today. 
If you need to watch the video again to help you, you absolutely can. You can come into a small group meeting if you feel like this is challenging. But like I said, I will also post the YouTube videos down below that might help you a little bit as well, okay? So let me just clear this so that it lets me go to the next slide. These are not mandatory. That means you do not have to do them, but you can do them for extra practice or to challenge yourself, okay? I will send these to you. Just some bonus pages where you have to uh, color all the quadrilaterals red. So if you're not sure what a quadrilater quadrilateral is, that's something right down here. It says it's a 2D shape with four straight sides, okay? Over here, you're gonna color the certain shapes and so on and so forth. These ones, if you want to send them to me, you can through email or on your portfolio, but you do not have to. Please do not put these in the activity that says page 94 and 95, because that's where I'll be going to look at your page 94 and 95, okay? Just put them on your portfolio or send them to me in an email if you want to send them to me. You don't have to, that's up to you, okay? Um, if you feel like doing some more, I'll put these games up as well that you can do after you've finished your work. And that's all for today. All right. So remember to have fun. Remember to take your time. Take deep breaths if you need to. Step away if it's getting tricky or frustrating and come back to it, okay?